This is Steve. Steve just got an email saying he got an assessment center. Steve's pretty happy about that, but he's also kind of starting to freak out because he's never done one before. So Steve goes to Google and found this video. Let the teaching begin. So here's our beginner's guide to assessment centers. So first of all, who am I to tell you anything about assessment centers? Well, uh, my name's Mike. I run a company called Jobber in English. I've been coaching since 2013, over which time I had delivered weekly sessions face-to-face -face with candidates, training them for assessment centers. Did that for five years, probably did about a thousand assessment centers. And I've done conservatively about 500 one-to-one -one sessions solely based around training people for assessment centers. I've done the writing and testing of material for over 50 companies, and I've prepared people for assessment centers for pretty much any big company you can think of. So I think I kind of know what I'm talking about. Okay. So what we're going to talk about is, you know, when will you get an assessment center? What is it and what's in it? The seven exercises you would get, you're not going to get all seven, but you're going to get at least one, two, or three of these seven. And finally, how you can prepare for it. So when are you going to get an assessment center? This is generally the last stage of most companies' application process. Um, we're, we're probably talking about a medium-sized company and up of, you know, at least a couple of hundred employees. Most of the time, you're going to wait the longest to get an assessment center. So up to eight weeks after you pass your interview, because particularly... Ugh, I've got hair in my mouth. Particularly when you're applying for big companies, everything up until this point is automated. Your application form screening, your online tests, even your video interview, it's all done by robots. But assessment centers are real people, you know, doing real assessing and stuff. Over 90% of companies use these as the final stage. Some companies may have a final interview afterwards. Most companies don't. They integrate it into the same day. And I would say at best, 5% of candidates who initially apply for the job will make it to uh, an AC or an assessment center. Probably more like one to two, actually. So what is it? It's half to a whole day of exercises with your competition under observation. If I was to sum up an assessment center in a single sentence, it's problem solving with strangers. Uh, particularly post COVID-19, I would say half assessment centers are face to face, but half are still virtual. It depends. There are pros and cons to both. And you just want to make sure you do your research on Glassdoor. You'll also get some information on the email when it gets sent to you. But companies tend to be reasonably vague because, of course, they want it to be a surprise. So they don't want to just you know tell you exactly what you're going to get so that you can prepare for it. I would say most companies will kind of tell you what exercises you're going to get, i.e. which of the seven types of exercises you will receive. Um, here's an example of an assessment sent the day. This would be face-to-face -face or online, everyone turns up, then you get an introduction video where they talk about the company, introduce the assessors, tell you about the process, you do an icebreaker when you get split into groups of sort of like four to six people. If you're going to be doing a group discussion, then you'll do an exercise, a break, an exercise, and then lunch, an exercise, and then closing comments, end of the day. Thanks so much. Don't call us, we'll call you. Um, what's in it? So generally, you would have an intro, lunch, and a chance to meet other people working at the company. A good rule of thumb to think about is you're not always being assessed, but you are always being observed, which basically means you've got to keep the energy up. I'm so happy to be here. If you're just sitting there looking miserable and bored, you've got to think, well, you're going to be working for this company nine to five, Monday to Friday, and you can't even keep the energy levels up for half a day they're probably not going to respond well to that. And you would generally have two to three other exercises. Some, I've heard of some assessment centers which have one exercise, some have four, but most will have two to three. And of course, I'm trying to be quite general to cover all use cases. Here's the seven different types of exercise that you could get. Retesting, group discussion, written exercise, case study, role play, final interview and presentations. Retesting 
is unlikely. Investment banks used to do this a lot. They used to basically do online tests again, but where you're physically present, this was to prevent people cheating, which they do, or get, you know, you get your mate who's really good at online tests to do them for you. Uh, group discussions are still very common. Written exercises are common or a case study, a written exercise where you write a business report, a case study where you, you know, do the same thing, but you present um, orally instead of, you know, by writing. Role plays are quite unlikely. You'd still get them for sort of salesy type roles, maybe BD, business development, but other roles you don't tend to get role plays that much anymore. I know a few consulting firms still do them. Um, final interview is very likely to get at an assessment center and presentations are likely. So most assessment centers are going to have a group discussion and a final interview and then probably one other thing. So let's have a look at just each of these seven exercises. Um, so retesting is basically just resetting online tests. I've not heard of this recently. So within the last kind of year or so, I've not heard of anybody having to reset their online tests, which is going to be numerical, logical, SJT or verbal. And it's really just to catch out people who cheat, um, particularly for roles where it was super important that you had that skill, i.e. being very numerical for an investment banking role, which requires a high level of numeracy. Um, group discussion. So this is essentially where you read and discuss material with three to five other candidates. Why don't you do it with 12 candidates? Because it's just completely mental. Six is sort of the optimum number. Three is not enough people. All the time while you're discussing stuff. So you'll basically sit down, be given material to read, and then you'd start a discussion and come to a conclusion and solve a business problem. Uh, these tend to be 30 minutes up to an hour. I don't tend to see many that are an hour long. That's really quite a long time to be sitting there and be like in problem solving, solving mode. Most of them are like 30 to 40 minutes. And all the time, whether you're doing it online or in a room, somebody's just basically sitting there from the company watching you and, uh, you know, their little, you know, tick sheet ticking stuff off. And uh, most of the time, it's you're, you're just solving a standard business problem. So I've written a lot of different exercises for different companies, and it's always pretty much the same. Company A has a problem, which option would you choose from B, C, D, E, or F, or very unlikely, I do hear, hear of them sometimes, you may get a moral dilemma. Um, why this is really just to see how you work with strangers under pressure and when you think about it this is the only exercise you can do to demonstrate some level of teamwork where you're working with other people all those other exercises that i've outlined are solo exercises yeah maybe you might get a pairs presentation but again that's incredibly unlikely for written exercise again you're given a set piece of material you're then asked to write a business report. This business report could just be a standard report. It could be in the format of you, you know, sending an email to your manager and again, solving the same kind of standard business problem. Um, this is really to test your writing and reporting skills and it's all about your attention to detail. Very often, um, you won't get enough time to consume all of the material. So these exercises are, are, are definitely designed, along with a case study, which we'll talk about next, to, to really make you aware that you've got to pick and choose what you're going to write about and what information that you're going to report on. Case study is exactly the same, but you're going to be presenting your answer to the questions to an assessor and then possibly have some sort of Q&A. Um, I know case studies are big in the game when you talk about consulting firms, management consulting firms, that sort of thing. Same, same kind of same stuff. But really, this time we're sort of testing your problem solving and presentation skills. I know um, people generally get quite anxious, not so much about the case study itself, but about the, the Q&A afterwards, because you're having to be quite creative and think on your feet and really um, exercise that problem solving muscle in your brain. So role play, which is quite rare outside of roles. Uh, I remember, you know, a, a long, long time ago, uh, KPMG used to do role plays. 
the reason why they don't do them so so much anymore is because they're super time consuming to do from a company's perspective. So you'll have a simulated exercise, which will generally between you be between be between you and someone else who's either a client, a colleague, or a manager. Most of the time, it's a client or a manager. From a sales perspective, it's probably like, you know trying to close a deal or trying to overcome an uh, an objection. Um, and you either present a solution or resolve a problem. So you're trying to get somebody to buy something by either presenting it to them or resolving an objection that they have. Uh, why do they do this? Because it's a great opportunity for you to exercise your client facing and sales skills. This is very interesting to observe, particularly when you're dealing with sales people who have to overcome objections and really think on their feet. A final interview is, you know, an interview of a manager, director or partner. It depends. Different companies are different. Um, most of the time it will be with uh, somebody who essentially is running your division. So this is a person who you will have very little interaction with, but you're coming into their BU, their business unit, and they just want to have the sort of final say. This tends to be a longer form interview. There are some nuances when it comes to final interviews, which aren't present for um, first round interviews. First of all, you know, final interviews can run for an hour or longer. Um, also, they can just turn into a conversation when it's very much more about getting to know you. And they don't tend to be as static or rigid as first round interviews, which is probably a couple of motivation questions, a couple of competency questions. And it's just to get to know you a little bit better, maybe dig a little bit more into your technical knowledge, into your motivation for doing the role. Um, essentially, from the company's point of view, they want to be sure that they're investing in the right person. When you think that they are investing a lot of time and money and having you come in to do all these assessments and stuff, they sort of want to think, well, it's going to cost us tens of thousands of pounds to train you. I want to make sure that you want to be here, you want to do this job and that you're going to stay so that we can get our return on investment from you. Um, presentations, these can vary. So they can either be pre-prepared where you're asked to um, go away and prepare on a particular topic. You might have a week to do it. You might be given the topic two or three days in advance, or you may be asked to put something together on the day. Um, most of the time, if you're being asked to put something together on a day, you're not going to you know, be sitting there and designing some sort of flashy PowerPoint. You're just going to deliver a presentation. But maybe if you've got you know, a day or a week in advance and you can do some sort of PowerPoint, so you'll be presenting to a member of staff on a particular subject. These tend to be um, you know, technical subjects which relate to the role or a commercial subject which is related to this. It's not like, you know, tell us about your favorite flowers. It's something that's really quite specific that your audience is going to have some knowledge on and probably ask you questions afterwards. Um, this is very much to test presentation skills and you would expect this in a role where somebody is going to have to be doing quite a lot of client facing work i've seen this you know fairly frequently in in roles like tax i've seen it in consulting i've seen it in particular banking roles i've seen it in you know different engineering roles where someone is expected to you know meet clients maybe do pitches present technical solutions and they want to see how you come off with your audience um getting ready so first of all just make sure you do your homework um research likely questions and exercises that you could get you can use something like glass door the best way to practice for assessment centers is no doubt to do case studies because most of the time you're going to have to be pre preparing by yourself so there's no point going, how do I, I need to find five people to do a group discussion. You're going to find it really difficult to do that. You want to learn how to write business reports, make sure your online tests are up to scratch, practice presentations and prepare for interviews. But very much your present, your preparation should be built upon the premise of these are the things that I'm actually going to do. So I'm not suggesting that you would prepare for all of these seven exercises. You want to find out what you're going to get and then prepare for those you know, you might touch on other things if you're not quite sure what's going to be coming up. But you want to make sure that if you know you're going to get a group discussion, 
do as many case studies and presentations as possible. If you're going to be doing a written report, do as many, you know, written exercises as possible. The best practice is stuff that's as realistic as possible. Also do bear in mind, and this is a really common mistake that I see people make, if you have a set of exercises and you're meant to complete them in half an hour, much like if you're doing a mock exam paper, then don't be sitting there and after two hours go, I finished, and think that that's a really good thing for you to do because it's not realistic practice. You want to make that as realistic as possible. So if you're looking for some help and you're kind of thinking, well, where can I get something, a pack, a bundle, which has all of this in, we can help you if you click down in the link in the description below. So we've got simple step-by-step -step instruction for how to prepare for any of these exercises, um, seven custom exercises that you can practice, uh, a step-by-step -step walkthrough of one of these called Keep It Natural, 25 teaching videos, 28 handouts, and recently I added a three-hour masterclass, which was recorded earlier this year, where you can actually see a group discussion live, see presentations live, and see me giving feedback, which you know I've never done before and you can't get anywhere else. And that's down in the description below. It's called Acing Assessment Centers. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. It has given you an initial sort of idea about assessment centers and what you can expect. If you've got any questions or you want me to do any more videos about it, drop a, drop a comment down in the description below. Show us some love, give us a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you soon. Good luck.